coming up, buying tech supplies will soon be as close as Cedar Hall by the end of the semester. An update on Eagle Tech is straight ahead. We'll take you to rehearsals from the fall musical from the theater department. Plus, an update on Eagle Volleyball and a preview of the basketball season. I'm Chris Ackman. And I'm Taylor Van Fleet. These stories plus kudos for Kirkwood's Jazz Radio Station. KSP News starts now. From the campus of Kirkwood Community College, this is news from Kirkwood Student Productions. Later this semester, a new Eagle Tech store will open on the first floor of Cedar Hall at Kirkwood Community College. When it does, Kirkwood will be only the third college authorized Apple dealer in the state, following the University of Iowa and Iowa State. As students have been passing through Benson Hall recently, chances are they've heard this. Construction has been underway on Kirkwood's new Eagle Tech store. Here, students will be able to get help on whatever computer issue may come their way. Eagle Tech will uh, benefit the students the most by its support, whether it's a student walking in and uh, needing a computer for the first time or first time here on campus, or having a computer already and troubleshooting simple issues, or to go as far as physically working on the computer if something's broken or needs to be replaced. Once construction is finished, Kirkwood will be added to a list of just two other Iowa colleges that are declared Apple product dealers. KSP's Bill Schaefer gives us a special inside look at the place where students will soon be able to bring their questions and computers. The students will be able to get the most out of by coming in often, uh, whether it's just walking in off the street, uh, in between classes, we'll have people there available to answer questions. Otherwise, we do take appointments as well. The sound of power tools hard at work will soon change into the sounds of students hard at work, whether it's choosing a new computer or just a simple question. Eagle Tech will be in an area that used to be the C store. Additional space is being added on. Among the many changes in Lynn Hall is one that affects the communications, media, and PR program. In August, the program moved to new facilities in Lynn Hall. KSP's Christina Paul shows us around. With the Lynn Hall remodel, one of the most recent changes is the installation of a brand new state-of-the-art facility for Kirkwood Media Services and Kirkwood Student Media. Kirkwood made the transition to the new HD facility over the summer and into the fall semester. Mitch Brown, media services producer, told us about some of the exciting new features of Kirkwood's new studio. Starting with fall 2012, uh, the student productions and media services have joined forces, if you will, um, from a studio standpoint and a production standpoint. So as part of this remodel, we were able to get all new uh, HD gear and new studio, new lighting packages, new everything. So we've got basically a fully functional, fully furnished 900 square foot studio, um, a 28 foot white psych for shooting infinite, infinite backgrounds and a 20 foot green screen for doing anything you can do on a green screen. Um, new news desk, flats, cameras, switchers, everything. Uh, and as part of this, we've started working more closely with the students on productions to give them a better real world scenario of what life's going to be like if they choose to get in production after they leave Kirkwood. In an ever-changing media landscape, Kirkwood students will get a chance to have their hands on the same kind of equipment being used throughout the industry. We're pretty much the latest and greatest in technology. We have uh, a lot of a lot more new gear um, and students can get their hands on it a lot quicker. Um, but we've got uh, three brand new Panasonic uh, HD cameras for the studio. We've got a handful of HD field cameras, two channels of CG teleprompters, three channels of video playback um, for instant replay. All this new gear has allowed us to compete with what's in the field and really get students practical experience with what they're going to see when they leave Kirkwood. Christina Paul. KSP News. From TV to radio, despite moving back and forth to a temporary home during the Lynn Hall renovation, Kirkwood's jazz radio station managed to rack up a couple of new awards. General Manager Dennis Green joins us now. How are the surroundings, Dennis? Well, now that the remodel is pretty much finished, we uh, feel like we're driving a brand new Lexus. <laughs> uh, the equipment's all new, the space is new. It's actually the first time in my professional career I've had a new desk. 
And despite dealing with all these changes at the studio, how has KCCK managed to still win awards? Well, it, uh, I won't kid you, it was an interesting summer and spring as we tried to keep the radio station going while the construction was going on all around us. Because unlike most of the other college departments, we couldn't move out of our space because that's where everything was happening. So there were days when you would walk over to the radio station, pick your way through the construction in the morning, and then go to come back in the afternoon and discover they'd poured a new floor. And you had to go outside and go around to get where you were going. As far as the awards go, of course, uh, that was very exciting to win Station of the Year. And our Bob Stewart won Programmer of the Year for the uh, fifth time. Uh, and it was a real vote of confidence on the part of the jazz radio and record industry. Uh, to uh, take a look at the different things we do, not only our daily programming, but also the jazz education programs that we do in uh, elementary, middle, and high school, uh, and uh, demonstrate that that is uh, something that they consider to be kind of a gold standard for what other stations should be doing around the country. All right, thank you. Dennis Green, General Manager of KCCK Radio. The summer drought took its toll on area farmers and homeowners. But there's one department at Kirkwood that's really seen its effects, both good and bad. KSP's Jamal Smith reports. Going back as far as 25 years, this year's 2012 was the most extensive and severe drought on record, affecting U.S. agriculture states from Wyoming to Iowa. Depressed uh, productivity um, amongst corn and soybeans, uh, but from an educational standpoint, uh, it does give us the opportunity to use it as a teaching tool. Nationwide, the USDA reported that almost 80% of agriculture land is experiencing the drought. And so it's about learning different environments, learning different scenarios, uh, and how do you roll with the punches, and how do you make different decisions based on whatever the environment is for that year, or whatever your limitations are. So spending time throwing out different scenarios with students and talking about them uh, gives us the opportunity to explore all the different uh, aspects of, of agriculture and hopefully making people better producers or able to work to make producers better. Ironically, while the drought hurt some operations, Kirkwood's viniculture program benefited. Winemaker and vineyard manager Lucas McIntyre says that it was a good thing. That's actually what makes some of the best wines around is that, uh, that stress to the grapevine and that causes, that lack of water is going to cause the, the vine itself to to dig deeper into the ground to source the water. He also added that it was one of his best harvests yet. Usually it's always wet and rainy here in Iowa, but not this year. So we had all the perfect conditions for, uh, for a great vintage this year. This year's 2012 harvest was an overall great learning experience for us all. And it just reminds us that Mother Nature is still in charge. Jamal Smith. KSP News. Up next on KSP News, the drowsy chaperone comes to the Kirkwood stage. We'll go behind the scenes and later, a new entrance as Kirkwood enters its 46th year. You're watching news from Kirkwood Student Productions. Stop. Take time today to think about the importance you play in the role of our country. You have the power to make an impact just by taking part in this year's election by voting. It's our country too. Just because we're young doesn't mean we don't have a say. Around 46 million young adults have already registered to vote in the upcoming election. Are you one of the 46 million? Young adults account for 24% of the entire voting field. Your vote matters. The best way to make a difference is to get informed. Find out who's on the ballot. Become educated. It's our country, too. For more information on finding a voting site near you, visit lincountyelections.org slash lookup. Take action today. Register to vote and let your voice be heard. Is that thing getting closer? Look how high that thing's going. Look out there, look at the debris. Oh. Uh, give me the camera. No, no, just drive, I've got it. Zoom in, zoom in. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, oh the size of that thing. It's everywhere. Are you getting this? Yeah, I've got it. What was that? It's the National Guard. How'd they get here so fast? I don't know. Pull over, pull over. Do you have what it takes to head into the heart of the storm? Check out nationalguard.com. The hotel at Kirkwood Center is officially open for business, where students learn the hospitality management industry from a professional staff. The hotel has 71 rooms and six suites. It also includes the Class Act restaurant, where culinary arts students and restaurant management students learn their trade. As General Manager Lee Belfield said, our mission is to produce graduates who will lead our industry over time 
around the globe. The hotel at Kirkwood Center is located on the south side of campus. Be sure to check it out. Welcome back. Kirkwood Theater students are gearing up for the first production of the school year. It's a story of mayhem and mix-ups. Crystal Sindelar joins us with more. Thanks, Chris. The Drowsy Chaperone is a lively musical that the director describes as just fun. Production has started on the upcoming musical, The Drowsy Chaperone. The students involved are hard at work practicing their scripts and choreography, as well as building the massive set. We got a chance to talk with the director, Rick Anderson, and get a rundown of what the musical is all about. It's about, well, it's like a lot of musical comedy. You know, boy meets girl, girl and boy get in a fight, they separate, they get married at the end, everybody's happy, right? Well, in this play, the, the same thing kind of happens, and other people bounce into each other as they're going to this wedding. The wedding gets called off, everybody gets reunited at the end, but really it's all about fun. With a large cast of 22 students and teaching them all the difficult choreography, I was curious of what Rick thought would be the most challenging part of this production. Just all of it working together, you know, because um, we'll have you know we'll have an orchestra in the pit and uh, we're going to be running uh, wireless mics, obviously, and uh, there's just so many moving pieces in a musical, and this one has a lot of moving pieces. I think that will be just getting in a rhythm of of doing that. This show is acceptable for all ages, but younger children may not understand the full production. Even though this musical might not be what people would consider to be a great musical, it's fun. And he says that right at the beginning. It's really all about fun. We're here just to have fun, period. Showtimes for the production are November 1st through the 3rd at 7.30 p.m. and November 4th at 2 p.m. at the Valentine Auditorium. Back to you. Thanks, Crystal. After the break, Austin Bramley joins us with sports for a look at Eagle Volleyball and a preview of the basketball season. yourself and others alive, don't drink and drive. Everybody can help by picking up their trash, and please do your part and recycle. Apartment living. You share the space. Be respectful. Austin Bramley joins us now with sports. Thanks, guys. The Kirkwood Eagle volleyball team has momentum on their side as they enter the final game of the regular season. At news time, the women were undefeated in conference and moving into the region regional tournament. Conference wins for the teams have been three game sweeps like this matchup with the Iowa Lakes Community College on October 10th. You know, at first I thought oh, this might be a long night. And, uh, you know, we saw, saw that we came back to our game plan. The passing got better. Offense is able to run. All of a sudden, we had some blocks. Things get a lot better when, when things start to fall in your, in your place. Region tournament action begins October 30th with nationals set for November 15th through the 17th. When it comes to basketball, Kirkwood has a rich tradition, and that means lofty goals for each season. This year, coaches for Kirkwood men and women's teams are starting to size up their chances. KSB's Marcus Shute reports. That's your key. You're going to hit home. You're going to 
Whether it's at practice or in early season games, both the men's and women's teams are working toward the national tournament. Coaches for both teams are optimistic but realistic. Well, you know, every year you try over in Iowa, win the regional, have a chance to go to a national tournament, have a chance to win it. So uh, we've kind of established kind of a higher, higher expectation, mm -hmm. which is okay. Uh, and I think that's an expectation that's uh, there, it's realistic at our program right now. So I would say, you know, first thing, let's win Iowa, next get to a national tournament and see what can happen. You know, our expectations for the team in general terms are to play hard, uh, play smart, and play together. Uh, and then particular to the games and the season, we, we, you know, we want to compete for a conference championship, a regional championship, and hopefully be a factor in the national tournament. Even in early practice, coaches pick up on player strengths. I think on paper, we've got a nice balanced group. We've got uh, seven sophomores. Uh, you could maybe say eight with Mike Lang transferring from a prep school. Uh, and uh, about the same, in, you know, many freshmen. So I like our balance. I like our potential for depth, uh, which is always a good thing. And there are things the teams need to work on. Uh, I would say right now, looking at them, uh, learning how to just play together and uh, if they don't play together I'd say the big thing is just learning our, our system to get get it down what they need to do and uh, it's, a, it's an adjustment. With the men's loss last season at the regional finals and the women barely missing a chance at the national championship game, both teams are hoping to get even further this season. Marcus Shoup, KSP Sports. Right now, both teams are playing non-conference games. Conference play gets underway in December. That's it for sports. Back to you. Thanks, Austin. Up next, there's a new flavor to the College Cafe. That story next on KSP. yourself and others alive, don't drink and drive. Is that thing getting closer? Look how high that thing's going. Look out there, look at the debris. Oh. Uh, give me the camera. No, no, just drive, I've got it. Zoom in, zoom in. I can't believe this is happening. Oh, oh the size of that thing. It's everywhere. Are you getting this? Yeah, I've got it. What was that? It's the National Guard. How'd they get here so fast? I don't know. Pull over, pull over. Do you have what it takes to head into the heart of the storm? Check out NationalGuard.com. You might have noticed some changes at the college and cafe inside of Iowa Hall. That's because it is under new management. The hotel at Kirkwood Center took over management of the cafe this summer. Now students can choose between different entrees and even explore the deli. And finally, we close our show with an entrance. Specifically, the main entrance. The roundabout on campus got a major makeover, including landscaping and a new set of flags. One of the biggest changes made was adding a statue of former Iowa Governor Samuel Kirkwood, who the school is named after. The statue was moved to the roundabout from its former location in the lobby at Lynn Hall. That's it for this edition of KSP News. From all of us at Kirkwood Student Productions, we thank you for watching.